Hello everyone. I welcome you on board flight of Captain Vijay in the series of flights to study meteorology for DGCA CPL and ATPL examination. Today we will fly through the third topic which is temperature. So fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off. In the last flight we studied atmospheric pressure. After pressure, temperature is the most important variable in meteorology. Remember Information or data covered in this video under red outline is to be remembered for the purpose of examination. So what is temperature? Temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy of the atoms or molecules in a system. Whereas heat is the total energy and both temperature and heat are different. Temperature is measured in one of the three scales that is degree centigrade or degree fahrenheit or kelvin degree centigrade you know very well water freezes as at 0 degree centigrade and boils at 100 degree centigrade and in your lifetime you must have some time had fever and fever is measured by mercury thermometer in fahrenheit and in fahrenheit scale Water freezes at 32 degree Fahrenheit and boils at 212 degree Fahrenheit. And what is Kelvin? This scale of temperature measurement has been taken from thermodynamics in physics, and it is an absolute scale and not relative like degree centigrade and degree Fahrenheit. Since temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy of atoms or molecules, at zero Kelvin. all molecular motion that is the kinetic energy cease to exist and it is the lowest temperature possible in the universe this occurs at minus 273 degree centigrade so to convert degree centigrade into kelvin just add 273 for example 10 degree centigrade will be equal to 10 plus 273 that is 280 d 83 kelvin and to convert kelvin to degree centigrade reduce 273 for example 10 kelvin will be 10 minus 273 and the answer will be minus 263 degree centigrade you also must remember the conversion formula for degree centigrade and degree fahrenheit the formula is as shown on the screen you need to remember this formula for solving numericals during examination Surface temperature is measured by instrument called mercury thermometer. It is placed inside a Stevenson screen to protect it from heating or cooling effect from outside. Surface temperature is always measured at a height of 4 feet above the ground or 1.25 meter above ground. Upper air temperature. Upper air temperature is measured by sending a thermometer with the help of a balloon filled with helium gas into the atmosphere. This is called radio sound. Radio sound keep transmitting atmospheric temperature data recorded at different heights to the ground station. Solar radiation. Solar radiation is the radiation from the sun and it is made of short wavelength due to very high temperature of the sun. This radiation passes through the atmosphere without heating the atmosphere at all. atmosphere is transparent to the short wave radiation of the sun however the earth surface receives this solar energy and gets heated up the process of earth surface getting heated by solar radiation is called insulation equator gets more heat as compared to the poles due to the angle of incidence of sun rays distance wise there is negligible difference between sun to equator and sun to poles due to the angle of incidence the heat received per unit area at equator is more as compared to at poles so that is why the temperature at equator is higher as compared to temperature at poles constituent of solar radiation the solar radiation consists of 46% infrared 45% visible light and 9% uv radiation 19% of solar radiation is absorbed by ozone layer 30% is reflected back by earth into the space 
and 51% is absorbed by earth's surface 30% of solar radiation which are reflected back to space by earth is called the reflecting power of earth and that is what is called albedo so albedo equals reflected radiation divided by incident radiation snow surfaces reflect 80% of incident energy terrestrial radiation once earth gets heated by solar energy or solar insulation it transmits the heat energy to atmosphere in the form of long wave radiation and the long wave length is due to the lesser temperature of the earth surface heating of atmosphere from earth's long wave radiation is called terrestrial radiation what is nocturnal radiation the cooling of earth surface by long wave radiation in night is called nocturnal radiation heating of atmosphere it is natural to presume that atmosphere is heated from solar radiation but that is not true atmosphere is transparent to solar radiation and atmosphere gets heated mainly from below that is from earth surface atmospheric heating takes place through one of the five ways which will be described one by one the first is terrestrial radiation which we have already discussed second is conduction when you put a utensil on a gas stove to boil water the handle of the utensil also gets heated this is happening since the heat is transferred from one part of the metal to other through the physical transfer of heat from one at atom to another to another and so on this method of heating is called conduction so when a air near the earth gets heated up heat is transferred to higher height through conduction that is from one molecule to another and to another and so on next is convection convection heating or cooling is when a parcel of material physically moves from one place to another and transfer the heat air near the earth surface will get heated by conduction and due to heating the density will reduce it will become lighter and therefore it will rise upwards to a higher height in the atmosphere and then by doing so it will transfer the heat to the surrounding this process is called convection condensation as the air is lifted it will be cooled due to the lapse rate of the atmosphere but when the temperature reduces the capability of air to hold water vapor will also reduce and below a certain temperature excess water vapor will condense into liquid water in this process the latent heat of condensation and that is 540 calorie per gram of heat energy will be released into the atmosphere the last method of heating is advection advection is transfer of heat through horizontal movement of air lapse rate rate of change of temperature with height is called temperature lapse rate lapse rate in troposphere is 6.5 degree per kilometer or 1.98 degree per 1000 feet till tropopause height of 11 kilometer above 11 km up to 20 km the temperature remains constant at minus 56 decimal 5 degree and you all know that as per isa the mean sea level temperature is considered to be plus 15 degree celsius isothermal layer when temperature does not change with height it is called isothermal layer what is inversion layer when the temperature increase with increase in height it is called inversion layer isothermal and inversion layers are associated with stability in the atmosphere and this we'll discuss separately in the next video inversion layer in night in night earth loses its heat energy by radiating heat into the atmosphere since there is no solar radiation in the night earth starts cooling after sunset this results in cooler temperature of temperature of air which is in contact with the ground below at night generally the height of this layer is 1 km above the ground whereas the temperature of air above 1 km is still warm in night so this results in the presence of inversion layer near the ground at night wherein the air at a lower height is 
cooler as compared to air at a higher height diurnal variation of temperature daily change recorded at a given place between maximum and minimum temperature over 24 hour cycle is called diurnal variation of temperature maximum local temperature is recorded at 1500 hours in the afternoon and minimum temperature is recorded half an hour after sunrise the maximum daily temperature variation occurs when sky is clear with nil winds or light winds and maximum temperature variation is about plus minus 6 degree about the mean value over the land and overseas the diurnal variation of temperature is hardly plus minus 1 degree about the mean value cloud cover cloud cover during day time reduces the maximum temperature the cloud cover during night reflects the earth radiation back to earth and increases the minimum temperature so the cloudy day is cool but the cloudy nights are warm effect of wind by day the wind will cause the maximum temperature to reduce since it will make the upper cooler air mix with the low level warm air in the night the wind will cause the minimum temperature to rise since it will make the upper warm air mix with the lower colder air so to summarize the windy day will be cool and windy night will be warmer specific heat capacity to heat up any material or to be precise to raise the temperature of any material we need to supply heat energy to it the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of any material by 1 degree centigrade is called its specific heat capacity specific heat capacity or sfc of water is 1 calorie per gram it means 1 calorie energy is required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree centigrade specific heat capacity of soil on earth is decimal 2 calorie per gram that means it will require 5 times more energy to raise the temperature of water by 1 degree as compared to soil on earth to summarize the water takes longer time to get heated and longer time to cool down as compared to land surface this phenomena gives rise to many situations like sea breeze land breeze fog over sea etc latent heat latent means hidden and latent heat means hidden heat let us understand this with an example when we boil water it gets heated up and at 100 degree centigrade it starts boiling at boiling point if we put a thermometer in the utensil we will observe that the temperature of boiling water will remain 100 degree no matter how long you boil it so where is the heat energy of the gas stove going well at boiling point the liquid water is converting into the gaseous water vapor conversion of liquid water to water vapor requires heat energy so liquid water is converting to water vapor with no change in temperature but consuming some amount of heat energy this is what is called latent heat or hidden heat the latent heat of vaporization of water is 540 calorie per gram that means it will require 540 more times of heat energy to vaporize 1 gram of water as compared to changing the temperature by 1 degree centigrade of 1 gram of water which is a huge difference so you see when water vapor condenses back to liquid water it will release the same amount of heat energy back into the atmosphere atmosphere also gets heated up through release of this lat- latent heat whenever the condensation of water vapor takes place into the liquid water the latent heat required to melt solid water that is ice into liquid water at 0 degree centigrade is 80 calorie per gram and when the liquid water gets converted to ice and that is what happens in your refrigerator it will release 80 calorie of heat per gram of water and this released heat is released into the atmosphere through the back side of your fridge and that is why the back side of the fridge is which is kept in our home feels quite warm and hot so hope this video has helped you in understanding the subject temperature in the meteorology with this we have arrived at our destination hope to see you on board again for the next flight like share subscribe and comment if you wish happy landings